Hello, and welcome to New Beginnings Baptist Church. We are so glad that you've chosen to join us today for this time of worship. My name is Pastor Brian, and our goal here is to help you to know and love God more. We believe that God has something special planned for you during this time. So let's hear from God's Word now. I want to invite all of you to open your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. If you don't know where that's at, there's an index in your Bible. You can start there and find 2 Corinthians, not Chronicles. A lot of people get those confused, but 2 Corinthians. If you're reading on your phone or your device, you can open the Bible app and just scroll down to see 2 Corinthians and you'll find it that way. Uh, we definitely want to read God's Word to start off our worship services because that's where the power and authority is, is it found in God's Word. Not in some clever teaching or something I say or that some author has said, but it is the fact that this is the very Word of God and it has the power of life, it has the power of forgiveness, it has the power and authority over all of our situation. So we're going to start off today by reading our text. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, starting in verse 4. For I wrote to you with many tears, out of an extremely troubled and anguished heart, not to cause you pain, but that you should know the abundant love I have for you. If anyone has caused pain, he has caused pain not so much to me, but to some degree, not to exaggerate, to all of you. This punishment by the majority is sufficient for that person. As a result, you should instead forgive and comfort him. Otherwise, he may be overwhelmed by excessive grief. Therefore, I urge you to reaffirm your love to him. I wrote for this purpose to test your character, to see if you are obedient in everything. Anyone you forgive, I do too. For what I have forgiven, if I have forgiven anything, it is for your benefit in the presence of Christ, so that we may not be taken advantage of by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his schemes. We are in a very short series right now, called Out With The Old. And no, I'm not trying to get rid of everyone who's old in the church. That's not what this series is. The series is Out With The Old, renewing our mind. We are challenged to let go of the things that have weighed us down. Hebrews talks about this, let us lay aside every weight and every snare that easily traps us up, let us lay aside those so that we may run with endurance the race God has for us. And as a church, we need to get rid of those things that are holding us back. We need to, to throw them out, not have a yard sale, but throw them out so that we can move on past those things. Things like regrets, mistakes, our past Things that keep us from growing in our faith and becoming what God wants us to be right now. And in order to do so, we need to clear some room. We need to clear the air of some things. So today is a very difficult topic. This passage, and it's not the only one in Scripture, is a very difficult one to kind of wrestle with because of the situation that it's speaking of. Today we're talking about church hurts. And it's hard for a pastor to get up and speak about the church. I love the church, not just 
our church. I love the church in general, the fact that God established the church to be his ambassadors to the world. I love the church. I love the people of the church. The church members and the attenders and the, the people God has placed in our circle of fellowship. Whether you're here with us or whether you're watching online, you're a part of the church. And I love the people that are a part of our church. So it's difficult for a pastor to get up and acknowledge that the church hurts people. That Christians, fellow believers, hurt each other. This is not something new. It's been going on, well, since Scripture is written. Because it's in the text. But this idea, this phrase that we use called church hurt is a fairly new phrase. And let's define that for us so we know what we're talking about. Church hurt is pain, sadness, the emotional and mental scarring or abuse by someone that's in the church. I believe we have that as a slide. I'll put that up there so you can see this. That the definition of a church hurt is the pain, the sadness, the emotional scarring, the abuse that has gone on inside of church context, inside of church buildings. All the way from pastors abusing their authority and, and something that, that, again, is fairly fresh or fairly new phrased, but it has been going on for a long time, and that is spiritual abuse. Paul even talks about it in one of his other letters that we do not hold authority over each other, but we should lead each other in grace and love and mercy. There are some pastors of churches that do not do that. They instead try to hold authority over everything. Control over everything. And there is such things as the abuse that has gone on from leaders inside of churches. It's all over the news. It continually bombards my inbox every week of new stories of a church pastor or a leader who has abused someone in some way. This idea of church hurt, it is troubling. It's a major issue. We cannot ignore it. We, the scripture doesn't ignore it, so we shouldn't either. As I've said, where scripture speaks, we should speak. Scripture talks about these issues. So it is very hard. that Today is a difficult message for me to deliver because of the fact that I love the church. I love people. I have had such great stories of my experiences in church. I shared those a couple weeks ago. And we laughed at a lot of them because they are funny. But when we come to this issue, it's not a laughing matter. And it breaks my heart. As Paul said in verse 4, that I write to you with many tears. One translation, one paraphrase, one commentator put that when Paul wrote this, what he was talking about was there were more tears on the page than there was ink that he wrote this letter. And I can't tell you the, how many times I have cried over the stories that I have heard of people who have been hurt by the church. You might have church hurt if, you've, if you ever have felt anxiety walking into a building for a church service and you just know you are, you are prepared for a battle or a confrontation. You just are feeling that anxiety. You might be church hurt. You might be church hurt if you experience little to no joy during a worship service. 
That as we are singing worship songs, it doesn't lighten you. It doesn't, it doesn't lift your spirit up, but instead you are just uh, ready for the, the, the abrasiveness of whatever is coming next in a church. You might be church hurt if you actually avoid going to a church or avoid going to a small group or a Sunday school class. Because you know in those settings, certain people or certain, certain things happen that just bring that hurt. You can't heal from it if it's constantly being irritated, aggravated. It's kind of like, you know, when I was little, and as boys often do, if we get scratches or scrapes or we get, we get, it starts to scab over and scabbing over is part of the healing process. But what do little boys do? They pick at it. And all that's doing is causing that wound to be fresh again. And that's what people feel like is like you sit in a church service or you sit in a small group and all it is is ripping off the scab. You just start to heal and then something happens and it brings that wound to the surface again. You might be church hurt if you have lingering feelings of anger or shame or sadness when you think about the church. I'm so blessed to be the pastor of this church. Because when I talk about our church, I get to talk about all the great stuff that's going on. All the things that are so exciting. Yes, I don't, I don't try to sugarcoat it. I don't give the, just the, the cotton candy version of our church. I'm honest about what our struggles are, what's going on. But for the most part, I don't have to talk too much. In, our, in a lot of my pastor circles, I get to hear about some of the things that they're facing. Some of the things they struggle with. And I hear about those from, from friends, not just pastors, but friends inside of churches. And so many of them have been hurt by the church and they struggle with going to church on Sundays. You know, there are so many jokes about the, the man who wakes up in the morning on Sunday morning and he's like, I don't want to go to church. They're just rude and they're, there's gossip and there's all kinds of bad things going on. And then his wife has to remind him, you have to go to church. You're the pastor. There's a reason why that is a common joke. It's because it's a common experience. So whether you've been hurt by a pastor or if you've been in a leadership role and have been hurt because you were in that leadership role or if you were just sitting in church trying to worship God and somehow, some way, you were wounded. The stories of church hurt that I hear, that I read, that I personally know someone who has gone through. Things like this, that a mother comes in feeling with her children and is shamed into taking her children outside of the worship building because they are too loud. You know how many people a church has ran off because we've asked them to control their children in a church service? Things like this, I have known too many pastor wives who don't even want to come to a church because the church membership hurts the wife of the pastor in order to hurt the pastor. Thankfully, so far, you have not hurt my wife. But I've heard too many pastors who their wives don't even want to go to church. I've heard of people being shamed because of an addiction, of a struggle with sin that they have, that they confessed it to someone in confidence, and then all of a sudden it is broadcast as a prayer request. And so everyone in the church now knows of their struggles. 
That's not the way that the church should work. We're not here to broadcast each other's sins and struggles. If someone tells us their sin in confidence, we need to pray for them and hold them accountable personally, not share it with everybody else. I heard of a single mom. She was diagnosed with cancer and she was struggling with not knowing whether or not she was going to take care of her kids. And a church member, well-meaning church member, I'm going to preface that, well-meaning, just told her, if you have enough faith, you can be healed from your cancer and don't have to worry about your kids. These are all true stories. And I could keep going on. But I think you get the point. I'm sure if we were to share openly and, and tell of your own church hurts, you have worse stories that you know of. And I could share some of the worst stories. All I'm saying is that this idea of church hurt is not something that is uncommon. I mean, if we were to ask this question, have you ever felt like any of these during a church service? Have you ever experienced any of these things? I'm sure a lot of you would shake your heads and you know what I'm talking about. If you have not personally experienced it, maybe you know of someone who has. You have direct contact with someone. This is not just something posted on a Facebook page or an internet blog or anything like that. This is something that you can personally hear firsthand of someone who has been hurt by the church. Again, Paul writes, and I, I, share, his inf I share his emotions here, that as he's talking about this situation, he is crying, he is weeping over the fact that someone has been hurt by the church. Now let me give you a little context to 2 Corinthians here. In order to understand what's happening in 2 Corinthians, guess where you have to go? 1 Corinthians. Kind of funny how that works. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul addresses an issue, a situation in the church that is very troubling. There's something going on there that is very, very, very dis disgusting, disturbing. And he confronts it because the church has allowed it to go on. The church has allowed things like this to happen inside of its walls, inside of its membership, inside of its... It's ministry. And Paul says this shouldn't be. You shouldn't allow things like this or even condoning it. There was immoral behavior that was going on. And so Paul says we need to address it. And he says this, that not even those types of things are tolerated among the Gentiles. Now there's a slap in the face to the church. If we allow something to go on in our churches that even the world would not accept or tolerate, that's an issue. We are called to a higher level, level of living because we are living for Christ. And yet we allow things that, that sicken God. They make Him angry because there is, this should not be said of anyone who is a follower of Christ. And even the rest of the world can stand in judgment over some of the things that the church has allowed to happen over time. If you've ever taken a church history class, you know we do not have a perfect record. We have far from it. But what we do have is we have the power of the Holy Spirit to come and to correct and to convict and then to empower us to change. We have God working in our lives to correct the sin that has gone on. But today's message is more about the fact that we now have to deal with the fact that inside of churches we have allowed people to be hurt. 
If we were talking about 1 Corinthians chapter 5, that's a whole different issue. There's sexual immorality going on and that needs to be addressed. And like I said, there's a time and a place to talk about those things. But in 2 Corinthians here, what has happened is that, that the people involved in that scandal in 1 Corinthians were shunned and outcast and kicked out of the church. They were forbidden from walking through the door anymore. And Paul quickly writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, he's like, now I have to correct you on something else because this is wrong. That person who had committed those sins in 1 Corinthians had repented, corrected, had dealt with the consequences of a sin and was ready to be reestablished in the fellowship of the church. Be invited back in. Yet the church said, not on my watch. You're never coming back in here. You have sinned too much to be allowed to be a part of this church anymore. Can I tell you this? That's not God. We cannot sin enough to make God say, that's it, I'm done with you. God says, if you come to me for forgiveness, if you confess your sins and repent of those sins, I will forgive you. And that's not a, a certain clause. I will forgive you a certain amount of times. As a matter of fact, when Jesus was asked that question, how many times should I forgive somebody for their sin? Peter thought he was being very smart, very spiritual. I will forgive them seven times, right, God? That's good. Seven is a good number. It, it's a number that represents perfect. I will forgive them seven times. After that, no, they're on their own, right? Jesus said, I tell you not to forgive them seven times, but... 70 times 70. That is a, not a mathematical equation, by the way. It was a phrase used for infinity. It was a phrase used to say that you continually forgive them if they come to you. Now, we're going to get there in a second, but as Paul continues to write to the church because they now have overreacted and now the church is guilty of hurting one of its own. Paul has to bring them back and, and kind of correct them. So even when the church is trying to do the right thing, we can hurt people. Even with our well-meaning intentions, of making sure we don't allow sin to infiltrate and we don't allow corruption to come in. Sometimes by over guarding ourselves, we hurt people in the process. People that we are supposed to love and care for. I saw this quote and I thought it was very, very fitting here. It's from Desire God, DesiringGod.org. And it said this, it says, one guarantee of committing to any local church is that sooner or later, it will hurt. Why? Because the church is full of a bunch of people. And we, as human beings, are good at hurting each other. Another quote from a guy who wrote several books that, that is uh, very impactful, says this. It says, The single greatest cause of atheism in the world today is Christians who acknowledge Jesus with their lips but then walk through the door and deny him with their lifestyles. This is what an unbelieving world finds simply unbelievable. Unbelievable. Church hurts happen when we are emotionally, mentally, spiritually, even physically damaged by people who are in the church who are supposed to show us the love of God. And church hurt 
hurts more because of two reasons. It, it hurts because it distorts our view of God. It affects the way we see God. The church is supposed to be Christ's ambassadors to this world. Yet if this is the way that a loving God treats people, I want no part of it. How many times have we heard that said? Because the church has hurt somebody. So it distorts our view of a perfect God. But not only that, but it corrupts relationships. The church is supposed to be built on trust and faith and love and grace and forgiveness. And so when we come in, we start building strong relationships. We start trusting each other with our lives and with our stories. We start, we start building intimate relationships where we know things about people in our church, in our small groups, that we wouldn't know about someone in the grocery store. We don't even know some of those things about our own family members. Yet we know things about church members more so. And so when we are hurt by someone we have trusted with part of our heart, part of our lives, part of our stories, it hurts more. We don't want to trust people anymore. And that's not a healthy place to be in either. So church hurt, hurts more because it distorts our view of God and corrupts our relationships with each other. But more than that, it also damages certain parts of our lives. It, church hurt interrupts and damages our spiritual health. If church is supposed to be the place where we grow in our faith and learn more of God's word and learn how to live by faith in this world, that we learn to study God's word and pray for each other and see the power of God work in and through each other, if this is supposed to be the place, then when someone hurts us inside the church, it messes with our spiritual life. It messes with our growth of our spiritual walk with God. We no longer trust God. We don't trust God's people. And sometimes, and I'll share this one, church members, certain people, are good at using scripture to abuse each other too. We will take verses out of context and say, God's word says this, so you need to do it this way. And they may quote the verse correctly, but it's not in context. It's not sharing the heart of God's word. It's just sharing the words found in God's word. And it hurts. We don't even know if we can trust the Bible anymore. When we've been hurt by the church and they use scripture to abuse us. It stunts our spiritual lives. Why do you think so many church members can't see God at work every day in their life? Because they're blinded by it because they've been hurt by the church. They don't have a good view of God anymore. It hurts our relational health. Relationships when inside the church, they do run deep. But not only do they affect, when we've been hurt inside of a church, not only does it affect our relationship with each other, but sometimes it may hurt and affect our relationship with our own family. I was listening to someone's story just recently. And his whole family was in the church. But the church was very legalistic and, and abusing power in a lot of different ways. And I can't get into the details because it's not my story, it's his story. But the way he goes on was because he separated from that church, he pulled his family out of that church. Now all of a sudden he is separated from not only his own parents and siblings, but his in-laws. And so his wife is removed from her family as well. His children are removed from cousins and grandparents and aunts and uncles. Our relational health is damaged when we are hurt within a church because 
What the Bible calls friendships and calls us to a deeper level of, of relationships, sometimes it becomes very confusing and disorienting when we've been hurt by the people the Bible tells us to love. So it damages our relational health. It damages our mental health. Hurt at this level can cause a loss of faith, a loss of identity, a loss of purpose in our own lives. It can lead to loneliness, anger, guilt, depression. And it can be bad. When people have been hurt by the church or someone in the church, it can lead to a very dark place very quickly. Sometimes it's too much. It's too large for us to handle on our own. And so it damages our mental health. But what Paul writes to the church in Corinth is that that we need to deal with these things so that we don't cause excessive grief to others. Verse 7 says that. That we should instead forgive, comfort, otherwise we may be overwhelm him with excessive grief. The church needs to address the issue of church hurt. Otherwise, there are so many people who are damaged in their relationships and they are overwhelmed and they can't see a way out. They can't see a way back to God because of the church. That is sad. That's difficult. Church members, we should, be, we should be nauseated over this stuff. We should be sickened over it. But we need to address it so that we can then help them come back to God. Help them to trust again. Help them to love again. Help them to know that because just because God's people did this doesn't mean that's the heart of God. Let me quickly share this. Briefly, let me explain that why people hurt each other inside the church. This is not an excuse. It's an insight for us. So we can understand and, and deal with the issues, not necessarily the person. But there's, a, there's three different reasons why people hurt each other inside the church. First of all, there are people within the church who are not believers. They are not Christians. They are not walking with God. They don't know God. And so therefore, people who don't know God, how can we expect them to love and show grace and mercy the way that God has told us to if they don't know God personally? If they have not accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior and declared Him to be Lord and striving to live the way that Jesus lived, how can we expect them to treat each other the way that Jesus treats us. So sometimes we have been hurt by people inside the church that aren't actually Christians. They don't believe. And I know that's shocking to all of you that there may be someone in here who does not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. But the reality is churches are full of them. It's not an excuse. It's an explanation Sometimes people inside of church hurt each other because they don't know God, they don't love God, they don't love each other the way that God has instructed us to. So why should we expect them to show love, joy, peace, patience? You know, the fruit of the Spirit that Galatians chapter 5 tells us that is evident in any and every believer. Why would we expect someone to show that if they have not had the Spirit of God in them? At all. Going to church does not make you a Christian. The second reason why people hurt each other inside church is that there are juvenile Christians. Another passage of the Bible, this is the Bible's words, calls them immature or babes in the faith. Okay? Can, I don't know how, how long it's been since you may have been around infants. You know, especially as they start getting into the toddler stage. You know what's one of their favorite activities? 
throwing things. When our girls were little, they threw things, and sometimes it would hurt. It would hit me in the face. Would I get mad at her for throwing something? She's a toddler, a baby. Instead, I would instruct when I was on my game. When I was off of it, I would yell at them. <laughs> Which, if you talk to them, they'll probably say I did more than I really did. Because sometimes when I say, you know, that hurt, Dad just yelled at me. <laughs> there are immature Christians in churches. Did you know that? People who, despite their physical age, they have not grown up in the faith. They did not, they have not matured into the things that God wants us to grow in. And so they are very immature. And immature people do immature things. Make sense? They don't know right from wrong the way that God teaches us when we allow God's Spirit to instruct us. And then here's the final reason. Sometimes we're hurt by other Christians in churches because they're human. They may be mature in the faith. They may have... They, they may do most things right, but every once in a while, we have a bad day. Have you ever had a bad day? Have you slipped up every once in a while? Have you ever lost your cool? Maybe snapped at someone? Maybe not. Of course, husbands and wives never snap at each other, do they? Especially someone who's been married for a long time. They don't lose their cool. They have the perfect marriage going on, right? Many years later. Once we're in heaven with God in glory, we may have that perfect marriage. I, you know what? We're going to have bad days. And again, it's not an excuse. It's an explanation. And by the way, if anyone thinks that they're too mature to mess up and hurt someone else, let me remind you what 1 John te tells us. 1 John chapter 1 says, if we, have, if we say we have no sin in us, we are deceiving. Another version says we are liar. I wish it would say that your pants were on fire too, but it says you're a liar, you're a de you are deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in you if you think that you are perfect. If you don't think that you could hurt someone else because you are a mature Christian, I've, I, I example, I, I exude Christ in everything that I do. You're still human. We still struggle and battle with sin. Not excuses, explanations. So let's get to the heart of this passage. Let's talk about what's going on here. The way that we can get, move on from the old, get the old out of the way, out with the old and renew our minds and renew our faith in order to establish what God wants us to do. This passage speaks of healing and moving forward beyond the hurt. It does not ignore the hurt, does not uh, uh, dismiss the hurt. It doesn't just say that, okay, because we're supposed to be good Christians, we're going to allow the same people to hurt us over and over again. Do not hear that from this. This is not what God's word is saying. This is not what your pastor is saying. This do, that's not healthy. If you are in a bad situation, if someone were to come in and say, I'm in an abusive relationship, we don't say, well, you need to forgive them and go back to them. With the, the guidance of Scripture, we would try to protect them and get them out of that situation. And so, here are three steps to renewing your faith after the church has hurt you from this passage. The first thing there is, Paul says, if anyone has caused you pain, we need to handle the hurt. We need to address the hurt. We need to admit that we have been hurt by the church. If anyone has caused you pain, 
See, as a pastor, I hear these things and it's, it's hard for me not to take them on and say, well, now I'm offended on your behalf. Then I would, get, I would be hurting myself. Some of you have accepted church hurt from other people. It's not actually your hurt. You're just offended. That's a whole other issue. That's not church hurt. That's a personal pride issue because you are taking up an offense that's not yours to take. But those of you who have been hurt by the church, those of you who may be listening and you have hurt, been hurt by the church, you need to address the issue. You need to handle the hurt. Admit where you have been hurt. Acknowledge that there's been something that has, that has gone on that has actually damaged you. You know, I wish that church hurt was just like a, a little scratch on a toddler, right? On a little child. What do you do when they, when they come, oh, I'm hurt. Oh, that daddy kissed the little boo-boo. Oh, let's make it all better. And you just kiss the boo-boo and all of a sudden they're running and playing like nothing ever happened, right? Right? I wish church hurts was like that. We can come and say, I'm so sorry you've been hurt by the church. Let, let's pray over that. And now, okay, you're all good. Go, go, go on. No. No. When we've been hurt by the church, especially at some of the levels we're talking about, we need to acknowledge it and address it. We need to to deal with the issue, handle the hurt in such a way that we are facing it. Instead, we like to try to do this, especially as good church people, we try to, you know, run and hide the hurt. We try to put on the face, oh, it's a good day to be in God's house, isn't it? No, you've been hurt and you're, you're here today and it's okay to admit, I'm having a bad day. I'm struggling. That's what authenticity actually is. When we can say, things aren't right, but I'm here to worship God because He is here. When we come back to that point, we not, we're not pretending like everything's okay just to make it okay. We're not faking it until we make it. We're addressing the issue, dealing with the things, and then allowing ourselves to feel. One of the things I want to remind you of is emotions are given to us by God. Our emotions, our feelings are given to us by God. But God never intended them to drive our life. We are not to be controlled by our emotions. They are supposed to enhance our experiences. And sometimes we need to allow ourselves to feel the pain of church hurt so that we can heal from it instead of just ignoring it or masking it. You know, part of the dangers of taking too many medicines to cover up the, the pain is actually you don't deal with the real issue. That's the first step. Paul is saying, if anyone has caused you pain, he has caused you pain, you need to address it. But then there comes to a point to where you need to then heal from the hurt. He says this, this punishment that the majority of the church has done on this person, it's sufficient. Okay? What they did in response to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, was more than enough. And now he's saying, now you need to come back and fix how, where you've gone too far. Some of you have punished churches for the church hurt you've experienced, yet the church you're currently in isn't the one who offended you, or hurt you, or wounded you in such a way. But you need to go to a new church to heal from it. You need to, instead, Paul says, now you should forgive and comfort 
and reaffirm your love for them. Maybe not the person who actually hurt you. You need to forgive them. Yes, that is a something God has told us to do. We need to forgive them. That doesn't mean we allow them back into the same place or the same level of trust. If someone has abused you physically or sexually, you don't go back and trust them with your life again anymore. You can forgive them. It may take a day, a week, a month. It may take 30 years, but you should forgive them. My own personal story, it took me 30 years to forgive someone who seriously hurt me. And I was struggling with it because I knew what, what God's word said. I knew that as a good Christian I should forgive, but I was struggling with forgiving this person. It took me 30 years and it took God working on me, not some good message, not some Bible study. It took God personally working in my life for me to forgive that person, but it took 30 years. It may not take, you may not be able to forgive the person tomorrow. But you need to be working towards healing. And the first step in healing is you need to forgive that person. You need to be able to then comfort, receive the comfort. You need to allow the church to comfort you, a healthy church to comfort you from the time that you were hurt. You know, I, especially when I'm sharing this from, from Scripture with I'm doing counseling with somebody and I'm telling them you need to really forgive that person they always come back with the the common phrase you've probably heard it as a matter of fact I heard it this morning in a conversation and and I told this person that we were going to talk about this in service so but you know the one that uh if you hurt me fool me once fool me twice okay but again going back to what Jesus says we need to forgive them. How many times? 70 times 70. We need to forgive them the way that Christ has forgiven us. Have you ever gone back to Christ and say, I'm sorry I messed up again on this same sin that, I've, that you've forgiven me for? You've forgiven me for? you forgive me for? God, I messed up again. And we always make those promises. I won't do, if you forgive me this time, I promise I won't ever do. Don't ever make that promise. You're human. <laughs> God knows that that's a weakness. And Satan knows that. And he's going to try to hit on it. He's going to try to peel that scar away. But let's say, just say this. Healing is not just a band-aid on a boo-boo. It's not a quick fix. The healing process for church hurt takes, I, I, this, is, this is an interesting little caveat here with this. In order to heal from church hurt, the thing that you need the most is a Christ-like church to heal from church hurt. To find a healthy church, to find a godly church, a Christ-following church. They're still going to make mistakes they, they may wound you too because they're full of a bunch of human beings. But if they're striving to live the way that Christ has taught us to live, called us to live, they're going to be part of your healing process. But again, it's not going to be overnight. It's not going to be quick. It's going to take time. But Paul says you need to forgive. You need to comfort. You need to love again the final thing not only do we need to handle the hurt and address it do not only do we need to heal from the hurt and that takes time but we need to hope after the hurt paul writes this that all of this that he's talking about of addressing church hurt the way that he is here he says I am doing this for you, for your benefit in the presence of Christ. 
Because even though that we all may have been hurt by someone inside the church, the hope that we have is not in human beings. It's not in a organization. It's in Christ Jesus himself. And Christ is the head of the church and he will fix what's wrong with the church. But we need a hope. Hope is more than just wishing that it's better. Hebrews chapter 11 says this, that it is the substance and the evidence of our faith. To have hope in what Christ is doing is to show proof that we know that we're not where God wants us to be, but we're moving in the right direction. We are hoping that God's not done with us yet. I don't know about you, but I'm, I hope God's not done with me yet because I am not where I know I should be. I hope that God's not done with us as a church yet. And the hope that I have is not just fantasyful wishing that I, that I just want things to be better. It's that I actually believe that God is at work and God will fix what is wrong with us. That God will help heal us and forgive us for the areas that where we have messed up. See, as we hope and as we try to realign ourselves with the church, after we've been hurt by the church, we actually are realigning ourselves with the cross. When that becomes our true north, that becomes where we set our sails and we, we look to move towards when that becomes the direction we move in is the cross. And what was forgiven on the cross and what happened on the cross, that keeps us moving forward to be Christ-like. That's what allows us to be able to say, you know what, we have messed up as a church. The church in general, in our Western civilization, around the world really, the church is not perfect, but you know what? There is still hope for the church because of the cross. Because of what Christ has done, there is hope for us. And so, church hurt is very, very real. It's not something to be swept under a rug. It's not something to be hidden away in a closet. Put in storage and say, you know what? I was hurt by the church. I'm going to shove it over here. No, we need to handle it. We need to heal from it. We need to hope that God's not done. The impact can be devastating from church hurt. But the question I have for all of us today, the question I have for anyone who has actually been hurt by the church is this. Do you want to heal? From it. You know, Jesus asked that question of a, a man who was paralyzed and he was laying on the ground and he walks up to him and Jesus asked this question and it really sounds kind of, kind of, uh, you know, they say there's no such thing as a dumb question. This is on the verge of it type of thing. <laughs> Jesus says, do you want to be healed? And then the more I think about it, it's not a dumb question. Because there's some people who like to be hurt. They like the attention they get. They like the fact that their anger is justified because the church hurt me. I'm going to reject the church. And I'm okay with that. I Actually, it fuels the anger inside of me. The more I think about it, the church is messed up. The question is, do you want to heal? Do you want to be healed? If you want healing, you got to come to the cross. You got to come to Jesus. He is the one to heal us. He is the one to forgive us. Have you ever hurt anybody? The Bible says if you've ever offended anybody, then you need to go to them and ask for forgiveness. If they won't listen to you, you need to offer it anyways. But the fact is, if you've hurt somebody, you need to try to make it right. 
Start with making it right with God and then try to make it right with that person. But if you have ever been hurt by the church, you need to come to Jesus for healing. Don't hide it. Don't push it away. Don't fake it anymore. Acknowledge it. Heal from it. And then put your hope back in Christ. Put your hope back in the cross. We're going to have our time of invitation. Let me end with this. Let me say this, church. I love our church. I want you to know how hard this, this message really was because I don't think that our church necessarily, at least in the time that I've been here, has, has hurt anyone intentionally. But I'm not ignorant to the fact that we may have done so unintentionally. Accidentally, we may have hurt people. And that, that grieves my heart. I'm not saying this out of trying to guilt us as a church to confess something that isn't there. But what I am doing is saying that we do need to acknowledge the reality of a lot of people that may come through these doors, that may be watching online, that may be here. We can do better. Church, we must do better at addressing these types of issues so that we can be a source of hope for a community that's hurting so bad. And sometimes they've been hurt by the church.